something to be excited about. Amen. Yeah. Heaven is something to be excited about. Amen. Yeah. We praise you tonight, Lord. I want you to get out of your seat, if you will. Touch somebody tonight and tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. Come on, turn to your neighbor. If there's somebody you haven't shaken their hand yet tonight, take a moment and shake their hand. We come to worship the Lord tonight. Let's love on each other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, tell your neighbor I came to worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Spirit is here. Hallelujah.
God and King.
Hallelujah. You're a good father, Lord. You know exactly what we need. sacrifice to come to be with us this week. And, and I really do believe that God intended Mick Snyder to be in South Carolina at this time. And he's going to be here for a month, and I'm believing that God is just going to do just what he has proclaimed, both in word and in print, that he is raising the tide, that the Lord is going to raise the tide. And, um, and I love, I heard it certainly wasn't original for me, and I believe he did um, allude to it, but I remember hearing a, a preacher say one day that when the tide rises, the battleship rises and the little tiny fishing boat rises. When the tide rises, everything rises with it. And so when God raises the tide, it's not just going to be one church that's blessed, but every kingdom-minded church is going to be blessed. And I believe we are a kingdom-minded people. And with that in mind, I want us to give a kingdom-minded offering. You may say, preacher, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what you don't know how little I have. All I know is how big God is. I don't know how little you have. I honestly don't. But I do know how big He is. And so I ask you tonight to give, not based off what you have, but give tonight based off of how big He is. 
and let him meet that need. Guys, if you want to go ahead and come on and get ready to sing again, and um, as they get th after they get through singing, the next voice you will hear will be that of our evangelist tonight. And so just lend him your ear, worship with him, and um, let the Lord touch you through this song and then also through the message.
our Latin brothers would stand up and say, La presencia del Espíritu Santo está aquí en la casa de Dios. Amen. Who knew what I said? Yeah. Yes, sir. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here in the house of our God. Amen. Amen. Let no one be mistaken about that. The Lord is in his house tonight. Praise our God forever and forever. Have you ever been aggravated with your iPhone? Man, I was, I, I, I was videoing a while ago, and it's just getting right on into a good and gooder part. That's not good English, but you understand where I'm coming from. And uh, all of a sudden, I get a little signal that says, there's not enough room in your phone. And I thought, stupid phone, might as well throw it against the wall if it's going to fail me now. But I thank the Lord for his presence and his goodness to us. Amen. How wonderful it is to serve the Lord and to know the wonderful power of his spirit. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for being here and thank you for all that, that uh, you're doing to uh, contribute to these services. God is in this place. Let no one be mistaken about that. God is here and we praise his name for that. I really do believe that the tide is rising, church. I really do believe that the, the, the rain of his spirit is coming down upon us. The fact is, I was asking a question today. Brother Melvin gave me the royal tour of, of the conference grounds and facility next door. And I asked the question, when the flood came in this region not too awful long ago, I wanted to know, I'm told there's not a lake in Lake City. And I, I understand that the water had to come from somewhere. I just ask. I'm, I'm expecting there's a river somewhere or there's a creek or something that just began to swell and came this way. I asked the question, well, where did all the water come from? And the response that I got was from the sky. It just <laughs> fell out of the sky. And I, I thought, well, duh, I should have known the answer to my own question. The water fell out of the sky. And as it fell, it just began to puddle up, I guess. It just began to, to swell, and it just began to move. And, and I'm praying that God will open up the sky tonight uh, and that the rain of the Holy Ghost will fall down upon us. It doesn't have to come from an hour away at the ocean. God can just send us a great tide and let it rise in this place this evening. Bless his name forever and forever. Well, I want to tell you this. These days and evenings of revival are, are, are quickly getting away from us. And I don't know what all God's going to do tonight. But I do know this. If I was going to miss any night of the revival, it wouldn't be tomorrow night. Amen. <laughs> I'd do my best to be here and to come and worship the name of our God together. And we give him praise for all that he means to us. If you have your Bibles, and you'll turn with me, please. I want to go to the Old Testament uh, book of Psalms. I want to read out of that old Hebrew hymnal. And if you would, I'm going to read from Psalm number 150. If your Bible is like mine, it's page 608. If it's not 608, then you're on your own finding a page number. Psalm number 150. <clears throat> I want to read this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to read this with some feeling. I don't want to read it like a lot of preachers read scripture as though they've never read anything in, before. But I, I want to uh, read this with some, some real feeling. Where the psalmist is exhorting us all to praise God. He said, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise the Ye the Lord. God, we love you. We thank you for your word. And 
we thank you because we're anticipating that you're about to do something wonderful in our midst. God, be glorified as the Spirit moves and as our lives are touched and we are drawn by your power into your presence. Thank you for what you have done. And having begun this good work in us as we worshiped you and praised your name, may you continue that until we see fulfilled in us everything that you desire to accomplish. And we'll give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated this evening. In Psalm number 150, it comes out of that, what I refer to as the Hebrew hymnal. There is an instructive message from the Lord through his servant to all of God's people. Praise ye the Lord. I want to preach to you for a little while about praise tonight. I'm convinced that there is power in praise. And I am convinced that there are some things that can be produced as a result of praise. Yeah. That there are some things that we need, we can get if we'll praise God. Yeah. There are some things that need to be produced and we can cause them to come into existence if we will praise the name of the Lord. Here's a question. How many of you would really like to see a breakthrough in some circumstance of your life? There's something going on. You'd like to see that circumstance change, that situation to become altered. You need a breakthrough in your own Christian experience, in your life, or in your walk of faith. Maybe you feel dry. Let's be honest. When we Pentecostals get dry, there's nothing more dry. Can you say amen? And when we're dead, I don't know of anything any more dead. Just thank God we don't smell as bad as we are dead sometimes. All right? But I'm thankful that the Lord gives to us the privilege to be able to break through in every situation and circumstance. What this psalmist is saying, to use Snyder's loose vernacular here, he's saying praise him if you hear or praise him if you're there. Praise him if he's done this for you and praise him if he's done that for you. Praise him if you can play any kind of an instrument. Praise him if all you can do is crash a cymbal. If you don't fall into any of these categories, if you'll breathe in air, just praise the Lord. All right, that's essentially what the psalmist is saying unto all of us. Now, the Bible encourages us, it, it commands us that we are to praise the Lord. Uh, what is praise, somebody might ask. Uh, and then somebody would say, oh, that's easy. Praise is the three fast songs that we sing at the first of the service. And then worship would be the, the three slow songs that we sing just before the preacher preaches. But I want you to understand that that, that is not what determines what is praise versus what is worship. Is there any difference between praise and worship? It simply, if there is, and I believe there is, it simply must be that worship is how we esteem God. It is the attitude of adoration in the human heart. You can worship God without making a sound. Praise, however, is the articulation of that adoring heart. So when we praise God, we are giving vent and giving voice to the heart of worship. So worship has to do with estimation, while praise has to do with articulation, but both come together and say that we esteem God highly, and we commend Him, and we bless Him, and we honor Him, and we humble ourselves before Him. The Bible is very clear. It tells us to praise Him. It does not say praise Him when you feel good. It says simply praise Him. It does and say praise him when everything has gone right. It simply says praise him. Didn't say praise him when you're healthy. It just said praise him. I've come to this place tonight to tell you that you and I ought to praise him and magnify his holy name. I grew up in the old church and they used to sing a little song that said oh the children of the Lord have a right to shout and sing for the way is growing bright and the oh, our souls are on the wing. We are going by and by to the palace of the king and it closes out saying glory to God. 
Hallelujah. The Bible tells us to praise him. It's calling us to give vent to our adoring heart. Again, I say worship may be silent, but praise is never silent. Whether the song is slow or whether it is fast or if there's not a song at all, we must come to a place that we accept our responsibility that we will obey his instruction to praise the Lord. All you people and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. And everything that has breath will praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says that we are to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, I want to ask a question. How many of you can sing? I mean, just it's a sorry dog won't wag his own tail. All right. How many of you are glad you can sing? Let me see your hand. How many of you wish you could sing? How many of you are sitting by somebody you wish they could sing? All right. I want you to understand. It has nothing to do with whether or not you think you're good or you think you can't carry a tune in a bucket. It has nothing to do with whether you can hit all the highs or whether you can reach down and get all the lows. It has everything to do with the fact that he is worthy of your best praise. And as an act of gratitude, thankfulness, and obedience, you will praise the Lord. Some might say, I'm just praising God silently. You can't do it. Amen. There's something about a grateful heart. It just has to begin to lift up its voice voice, and I wonder how many times are our hearts screaming to our throat saying, please, give me a voice. Please lend me your voice. Give me your vocal cords. Give me your hands today. Give me your feet for a little while. Give me your head. Give me your eyes. Give me everything that you have that from my heart I can praise the name of the living God. There is power in praise. There's something about lifting up our voices, whether we are singing or shouting, whether we are, are, are healthy or sick, whether we are wealthy or poverty stricken, there's something about lifting up our heart in the grace and goodness of our God and making his praise glorious. I want you to know there's some things that you can produce by and through your praise. First of all, Praise secures the manifest presence of God. I am convinced that if you and I will praise him, God will make his presence known in our midst. Amen. Now, I told you I grew up in the old church, all right? I thank the Lord for my upbringing. I rejoice in my heritage. I thank God for what those folk taught me, the life they lived before me in exemplary fashion. I thank the Lord for that. I grew up in the old church where we weren't so dignified, but folks had cut loose and run the aisles, and, and they'd fall out on the floor, some of them, and, and they'd shake the hairdos down, and, and they'd tremble, and an old man that hadn't shaved and get up off of one pew and walk across the aisle and hug somebody, shake his hand, say, if I've done anything to offend you or hurt you, I'm sorry. I just want you to know I love you and we want to go to heaven together. That's the kind of atmosphere I grew up in. It was a kind of an atmosphere that there was one service. There was a gentleman fell out stiff as a board, fell across that one step up to the platform. My dad looked at his watch so he could tell the coroner what time the old fella died. That's the kind of atmosphere that, that I actually grew up in. It's all that I have ever known. So I want you to understand praise is not something that is foreign to me. But the word says that praise is comely for the upright. You never look better than when you're praising God. Oh, but preacher, when I begin to praise the Lord, it messes up my do. When I praise the Lord, it messes up my face. When I praise the Lord, I, I get all concerned about what folks are thinking about me. You never look better than when you're praising him. Yeah. Let the tears roll yeah. and let your hands be lifted in his presence yeah. and let the spirit within you cry out, God is good yeah. and I am loved by him yeah. and I love him in return. But in the old church that I grew up in, we kind of had this, this unwritten understanding that when God moved, we would respond. And respond we did. He was 
would move, the Holy Ghost would come down, and those folks would get happy, Pastor, and they'd shout, and they'd carry on, and, and some of us young ones, we'd look back there, and we'd kind of chuckle a little bit, but, but there was no question. This was something that was more than what those folks were able to do on their own. God was in it. But the unwritten thought was that when God moves, people will praise him. But I want to tell you that the scripture actually gives us the understanding of that thing in reverse. It teaches that if we will praise him, that God will move. Amen. So rather than just sitting back and waiting on the Lord, rather than just coming and just, just anticipating, God's going to move and when he does, I'm getting in. How about you and I get in and let's see God move. Amen. Let us enter into his gate with thanksgiving. Let us enter his courts with praise. Don't come in halfway through the service and then hope God does something. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will be thankful unto him and I will bless his holy name. Second Chronicles chapter 5, the Bible tells us at the time of the opening of Solomon's temple, it says to us that all of the Levitical singers, Asaph, Heman, Jedithan, their sons and kinsmen were arrayed in fine linen with cymbals and harps and lyres, and, and they stood east of the altar with 120 priests who were trumpeters. And it was the duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments in praise to the Lord, they sang this, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not stand to minister because of that cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. How long has it been since we experienced that moving of God and that infilling of the sanctuary with that Shekinah, if you will? Somebody would say, well, it just don't come down like it used to come down. May I submit to you that may be because some folks don't praise him like they used to praise him. Amen. If you and I could come back to that place, that we would come determined that I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and come and let us exalt his name together. Everything that has breath is to praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And if I will praise him, he will make himself known. That's what happened on this day. They began to sing and they began to make music and they began to dance and they began to glorify him. Don't wait until something is happening. You make something happen by giving God praise and giving God glory. Who knows? It may very well be when you and I come into this place and we start singing and we start magnifying and we begin to praise him. It may be that God will turn that atmosphere into a great conviction and sinners will make their way down the aisles and come weeping and repenting of sin and believers who are struggling would come and say, God, would you sanctify me here and now? And the sick would come and believe God and be healed. God, grant to us that we will begin to praise the name of our Savior. Amen. We can produce the manifest presence of our God. Yeah. Understand something. Preaching has its place. And I'm a preacher and I choose preaching. I'd rather hear preaching than singing any day. That's just me, all right? I, my, my folks, my family, I ride down the highway with me. And eventually they're saying, can we listen to something else <laughs> besides preaching? My heart cries out. I said, why would you want to? But nonetheless, I, the, the, the Preaching in and of itself, the proclamation of, of his word alone is not what makes the manifestation of God's presence. But when I hear the preached word, faith is now created in my heart. I believe God. 
I hear about salvation. I believe that God wills to save me. I hear of his grace and mercy, so I believe that he will forgive me. I hear about his cleansing, so I believe that he will sanctify me. I believe about his power because I have heard the message of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They told me that I could be healed, so I believe the word of God that he is a healer of every kind of sickness and disease. But as they're preaching, all of a sudden, I'm believing, and I began to cry out upon him his name and in my prayers and in my praises his manifestation comes to a reality in my life. Now the Bible teaches us that God inhabits the praises of Israel. Now you and I are crafted in so when we praise him we're giving God a place to inhabit. Now when you inhabit that's more than just a visitation. Or some folks, some churches, some Christians, they, they just settle for a visitation every once in a while, every now and again. And when it happens in some churches, it's really, it bends them all out of shape and rips them out of their frame because it just hasn't happened in so long. They just don't know what to do with it. But I'm glad to tell you that God does indeed inhabit our praise. And so when we come into this place and we begin to clap our hands and pat our foot and open up our, our mouth and lift up our voice and we begin to make a praise out of out of our heart and we begin to make a joyful noise on the hill. According to this, this is, it's either true or it's not. It either works or it doesn't. It either happens or, or it's not true. But he comes down to dwell and to abide, to reside. If we want the Holy Ghost to move in our churches again, we got to return to praising God and magnifying Him. And you may say, but what do I have to praise God for? You woke up in your right mind. You ought to praise Him. You have reasonable good health. You ought to praise him. You had enough money to go to McDonald's. You ought to praise him. You had gas in the car to get here. You ought to praise him. You got a hope of a better day coming. You ought to praise him. Everybody ought to praise the name of the Lord. For he's worthy of our praise. His name is great. It's greatly to be praised. In the city of our God. In the mountain of his holiness. He's beautiful. For every situation, our God is worthy to be praised. Somebody shout amen.
this tonight. Amen. Amen. The spirit of the most high God has indeed come down in this place. The Bible says, and he said, with the Holy Ghost on him, he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be, somebody ought to take this to heart. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korhites stood up. Some folks have bowed down facing the dirt, worshiping the Lord. Now you have others who have decided they would stand up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat that stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed some singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, and they said, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. And when they begin to sing and to praise. The Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, and they were smitten. I've come to this place to tell you that if you're in the white heat of a battle, if you'll just open up your mouth and praise the name of the Lord, there is victory available to us. I'm convinced that there are some battles that you do not have to draw the sword from sheath. There are some battles you don't have to get the stone and put it in the sling. There are some battles you don't have to hurl the javelin. Other battles you do not have to draw back the bow to let the arrow fly. There are some battles all you have to do is get up on your feet and say thank you God for your goodness to me. And I bless you and I praise you and I honor you and I give you thanks. And you can praise your way into victory yeah. and into triumph. Amen. You believe amen. what I'm telling you? Say amen. 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 I am convinced there are some battles all you have to do is praise God. Yeah. Now, don't misunderstand me. I've fought plenty of battles, writhing in pain on the floor, weeping and shedding tears, and messing up my nice iron suit, and messing up my face, and leaving carpet burns on parts of my, uh, of my skin where, I, where I'm just simply moving in, in whatever direction I can as I'm fighting the good fight of faith and, and believing God for victory. But thank God for the times that I'm not down on my knees uh, begging and pleading and rebuking the devil. Uh, there's sometimes I've had the victory and it was just because I stood up and said, thank you, God, for giving me victory. Thank you, Lord, that I am more than a conqueror through him that loves me. Thank God that I have overcome the world. Thank God that greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. And if you need a victory in some area of your life, instead of focusing all of your time on that situation, on that mountain, why not cry grace to the mountain? And why not bless the name of our God and magnify his holy name? In Psalm number 149, here we see praise that is coupled together with a declaration of God's word. <clears throat> and when it happens, praise coupled with the word of God brings about the binding of the enemy. Follow with this. Praise ye the Lord, he said in Psalm 40, 149. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Yeah. 
and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Can I just throw on the brakes here and tell you something? Folk, we've been dancing in Pentecostal churches for years. Amen. Don't stop it now. Amen. Amen. All right, I understand. There's some folks dance different than you and I do. There's some of you dance circles all around me. But I want you to understand that it is a scriptural, it is a spiritual, it is an okay thing for us to magnify the Lord in a dance. Somebody say amen. 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 Yours may not look like somebody else's, but don't you get hooked up on the fact that, that you can't dance and you're, you can't bust a move as good as somebody else. It's not a matter of busting a move. It's a matter of I'm going to praise God and let my praises bind the adversary. That's what it's all about. It's not about you and me looking, you and I looking good. It's about making much of God and exalting God and seeing the adversary bound in chains. So let them praise him in the dance and let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and a harp for the Lord takes pleasure in his people and he will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand so that it will execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. And this is an honor that all of his saints have. I've come to tell you that there is power in praise. If you and I will praise the name of our great and good God, we will see the adversary absolutely bound up. I believe with all of my heart, when the enemy comes against you, you can stand on your feet and say, God is good, and I bless the Lord anyhow, and I praise his name in the conflict. I praise him in the valley. I praise him in the darkness. I praise him in the dungeon. I will praise him. And the whole time you're praising God, you're getting free, and the adversary is becoming bound. God grant to us that we will return to being a people of praise, giving glory and thanks under his holy name. I'm convinced that praise enables us to resist the devil. Doesn't the book say that if you will submit yourself to God, if you will resist the devil, he will do what? He'll flee. You think the devil's going to stick around while you're praising the name of the Lord Jesus? No. Oh, he, he, he may just come up there and, 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 and growl a little bit. But when he sees that, that you're not intimidated, you just come to praise the Lord. Folks, well, hear me. There's sometimes what you're going through, that's the only way you're going to get out of it, is to praise God. There have been some times, I, I, like I said, my experience with Jesus hadn't always been cute. Oh, I mean, I, I've been through some stuff. How many of you have been through some stuff? Yeah. I can tell you stories, and if you have any compassion or grace or kindness or love at all, I can have you in tears. I've been, bless my heart, nobody knows the trouble. I mean, I've been through some stuff in my life. But I want you to understand that despite what I've gone through, I have come to understand that God is faithful. Yeah. Even when I was not, God was faithful. He has never overpromised. He has never underperformed. God is true to his word. And if I will praise him, he will set ambushments against the adversary. And the Bible teaches us that his people were delivered and they had victory that day. And you and I can learn how to resist the devil. Somebody said, well, to resist the devil means to write a message on the bottom of your shoe and stomp it two or three times. And if that works for you, then go right ahead. But what I have learned is that if I will, in the midst of everything going wrong, if I'll just bless the Lord anyhow, Hallelujah. if I'll just be thankful unto him anyhow, and through my tears and trying to figure out what happened and why it went wrong and can't figure out what to do now, what I do know is that I will praise him. I will praise him.
praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all you people, for his blood can wash away each stain. I don't rejoice because I have trouble. I'm rejoicing because my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And this trial is only temporary. And I'll soon be done with my troubles. And I'm going to sing and shout the victory on the other side. And since that's where I'm headed, why don't I just go ahead and sing a little now. And shout a little now. And bless his name a little now. Because the Lord is great. He is bigger than what's the matter in our lives. Can you say amen, amen to that? Amen. so heavy at times that it was all my spirit man could do to keep my feet going and not collapse to the floor. But the scripture teaches us that if we will praise our God, that he will lighten that load and lift that burden. In Isaiah, <coughs> excuse me, chapter 61, verse number three, he talks about appointing unto them that mourn in Zion and to give unto them beauty for ashes and to give them the oil of joy in place of their mourning and to give them the garment of praise instead of that spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And it's all so that he might be glorified. There are people who carry very heavy lives. And there may be some among us tonight that your mind is troubled and your soul is grieved and your spirit is crushed and your shoulders are stooped underneath the heaviness of the load that you bear. But I want you to know that you can exchange that old garment of heaviness and lay it aside. Somebody sang a song years ago, the windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment and he gave me a robe of new white and I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That's why I'm happy tonight. There's some people don't understand why we sing and why we shout and how we can rejoice through our tears. It is because we know who he is and we know whose we are and we know he's a good, good father. And we know we are loved by him. Amen. And we will praise his name forevermore. We're going to praise him yonder. We must praise him in the here and in the now. <clears throat> we must exchange that old spirit of heaviness. Don't fall out with me here, but I just, I, I just want to encourage somebody. If you're the kind of person that you're always sad and nobody likes to be around, Everybody's got their own trouble. Okay, time out. There are some people I have learned you don't have time to ask, how are you? <laughs> you just, there's been some times that I've, I've come up on folks, I say, hey, how's it going? I thought, you don't need to ask me that. <laughs> Too late. And they, they've got a listening ear. And I try to be kind. I try to be gracious. But I come over. From the same old sad sack who can't, who can't get happy about anything. Oh, the, the sun is shining. Yeah, but it was raining two days ago. And they tell me it's going to rain again next week. Yeah, it's only the sun shining today. The Lord is good this day. Oh, how are you feeling? Well, I'm feeling better than I was, but I really don't want to talk about it too much because it, it may not last. Enjoy it while it's lasting. Let us have joy in our hearts again. You know, there's some folks, if you give them a crisp $100 bill from Wells Fargo, they're going to complain about it because it's too stiff and it's never been folded. <laughs> there's some folks you can't make them happy. But I want to tell you something. In the Lord Jesus Christ, there is happiness. Amen. For happy are the people who know the joyful sound. And happy are the people whose God is the Lord. 
and blessed are those who walk in obedience and, and in fellowship with the Savior. And so it is that here he teaches us that we can secure an unburdening. And it, it may be, I'm going to guess that you've sung this song at some point. You know, we sing a lot of songs. It's got a lot of gesture. Pastor, I was on the platform one time years ago. And I, 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 the choir was in full choir, robes and everything. They were right behind me. I didn't know the gestures. Okay? I didn't know to duck. And I've got all kind of hands and arms just coming and slinging and slapping all around me because I didn't know that we were all supposed to do this at that particular moment. But I want to tell you something. It's not a matter of you getting all the gestures right to the song. It's not a matter of you and I following some pattern and doing what somebody else told us to do. It is a matter between you and your God. And I will bless. The, if nobody else will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord. I will be thankful unto him. If nobody else is thankful unto him, you say, I've been the one who lost the coin in my house. Now, the neighborhood didn't get happy when I found it, but I was happy when I found it. Amen. So I'm calling other folks to rejoice with me. And I've been the one who, who has come there to that place that I've lost the sheep. And other folks didn't get happy when I found it, but I rejoiced when I found the lost sheep. And there, whenever the father's son comes back home, not everybody got happy, but the father's rejoicing, and the sons are making merry, and they're inviting the neighborhood. So what I'm just saying tonight, you may not get much out of this thing tonight, but why don't you just rejoice with me a little bit? Amen. Why don't you just be happy for me a little bit? If you can't be happy for yourself, be happy that somebody else is happy. Rejoice because somebody else is rejoicing. You may not have got a raise, but somebody needs to be happy for them. Let us bless the name of our God together. Let us come out from underneath that old heavy burden and let us begin to magnify him and glorify his righteous yes. because he is good. Yes. Amen. You folks have to preach me to death in this place. There is a reality in knowing that we can praise him and we can exchange that old heavy burden and we can receive that old, that glorious, glorious manifestation of his joy. Fourth thing I share with you. Praise secures I just can, can I confess for several of us tonight? All right. If you've ever been in this, go ahead and say amen and nod your head. Those head nods will keep the preacher preaching for a little while. But I, I just want you to know that, that sometimes you get all bound up and you get all fettered. But through praise, you can find some release. Yeah. Through praise, you can find some liberty. Through praise, you can find some, some victory. Through praise, you can find some deliverance. Go with me. You remember they have a great revival going on. There's two preachers involved. A man named Paul used to be called Saul, but now he's known as Paul. And he's got a buddy named Silas. The Bible tells us they had a great revival going on. One little problem. They got one woman saved, and she really took this thing to heart. And she changed the way she was living. She stopped doing what she used to do, and that impacted the bottom line, the economy, of a lot of folks in that region. And they're now upset because this woman is no longer doing what she used to do to make money for them. And so they take the preachers and they throw them in jail. Now notice what the preachers didn't do. They didn't write a headquarters complaining about how they were treated in that city. They didn't write anybody and say, you know, could, could you come take over our scheduling and our booking and don't book us anywhere where we're going to have any problems, that, where we're not going to have the, the most uh, things going for us. That's not what they did at all. They were glad that they could be counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. Now that'll rip a lot of Pentecostals, Neo-Pentecostals, and Charismatics out of their frame. But I want to tell you something. Sometimes you're serving God and there's some suffering that comes along with it. Sometimes you're praising God and you're serving God and you're living for Him and things aren't going right and you're not happy and things are going wrong and 
it's going from good to bad and getting worse every day. That's just the dreaded reality of life in this world. We have been redeemed in our spirit, but these bodies have not yet been redeemed, and we're still having to deal with the effect and the result of the fall of Adam back in the garden. But here's what took place. These boys have been beaten. They are bloodied and they are now imprisoned. And the scripture says to us that they prayed and they sang praises unto God. This is at midnight for them now. Let's be honest. At midnight, most of us are not at church any longer. It is long gone and we are at home. And if it is nine o'clock, we're kind of looking at our, we don't look at it now because we're not there yet. But at nine o'clock, we're all sitting there saying, how much longer is this going to last? And how much longer is he going to preach? And he's really getting something out of it, but it doesn't feel like I'm getting much out of it. And at that point, you know, maybe if you just holler, holler and shout amen. Maybe if you just say glory to God, maybe you get something out of it. Amen. But here at, the mid at midnight, they began to pray and they started singing praises unto our God and the prisoners heard them. Let me tell you something. When you're going through the tough times, other people are observing you. They're listening to whether you're belly aching or you're bragging on the goodness of Jesus. They're listening to you. They're paying attention whether you're praising God or complaining constantly about what's going on in your life. They prayed and they sang praises and the prisoners heard them and somebody told it like this. They said those guys were singing and they were praising God and making a melody in their heart and they were down on the earth. Everybody knows the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Somebody painted a picture and said God was sitting up in heaven on the throne and those two preachers began to sing praises at midnight and God started enjoying their message in song and he starts tapping his toe and when God began to pat his foot on his footstool there was a whole lot of shaking going on amen and the prison house was breaking up and the shackles are being destroyed and the prisoners are being set free and God is being glorified and exalted if you and I could learn the blessedness of praising God in the prison and making his praise glorious we can understand that it would give to us a liberty and a freedom. There's freedom in praising God. Amen. There's, there's, there's a lot more I can say. I'm going I'm to close right here. I want to tell you, church, we've got to come back to being a people of praise. We've got to praise Him. We've got to praise Him. Because praise is comely. sickness, what disease, what malady you deal with. I don't know the circumstances that have come into your life that have burdened your heart. I don't know the things that draw the passionate tears from your eyes. I don't know the circumstances in your family. I don't know what's going on on your job. I don't know all those things. But I do know this. Our God is good. And our God is great. God hasn't changed his mind about the way he feels toward you. God loves you as much as he loves anybody else. Amen. Bless his name. I'm going to ask you this. Would, would you just come from everywhere, side to side, front to back, everybody in the room, would you just come forward? And this all just makes to me. Would you just come right in here? I, I'm sensing.
mind He saved me I'm gonna praise His name Come on and praise Him Look what the Lord
tonight, the praise team is sitting up here, and Jordan jokingly says, I want us, we're going to sing Everybody Will Be Happy Over There. Joking, he was just teasing. Brother Mick heard him and said, well, I want to record it when you sing it. And Jordan said, no, no, I'm just teasing. We're not, that's not what we're singing. And then they get up and sing, Everybody Will Be Happy Over There. But I couldn't help but think, there's some church folks that probably won't make it. Because they determine they're not going to be happy anyway. But that's not you and I, is it? Amen. You know what? If you can't be happy here, you probably won't be happy over there. You probably won't make it over there if you can't be happy here. Because there's just something about Jesus being on the inside of you. You know, the old timers used to put it like this and said it just dumped a honey bucket over in the soul. Amen. Do you know what they mean when, he, when they say to you, have you ever felt that? We just dumped a honey bucket over in the soul. Amen. That's the way we felt tonight. 